Hello chaps, I'm Quantic a senior software engineer with an education in electronics and semiconductor physics. Today I will show you my recent maximum value PC build. I'm a long time Mac and Linux user on the laptop side for my software engineering tasks, but I'm tired of the fan noise. So I decided to create a desktop build and get the maximum bang for my buck while retaining great upgradability. Passmark Benchmark Software is a great website where you can keep track of the price performance index of CPUs and GPUs that are available on the market. So I use that to choose the components. Keep in mind that Passmark is a synthetic benchmark, so it will match the workstation workloads like programming and graphics design better than gaming. On a side note, even though I have studied semiconductor physics and electronics, they were of no use while doing this build. The microelectronic circuits that you study in college are very low level and the PC parts are higher level components. Let me give you the specs right away and then I will tell you what I will plan to do with this build. If you want to replicate parts of this build and if you want to help the channel, you can use the Amazon affiliate links in the video description below so the channel will get a percentage of your purchase. I generally recommend getting your parts from no more than two different sources so the returns and repairs won't be a nightmare. Choice of components. Before starting the actual build, I want to talk about the component choices. Remember that I chose my components with primarily software engineering and light video photo editing in mind. Starting with the CPU, if we refer to the Passmark website again, you can see that I didn't choose the top item in the list since it is an Intel CPU and I do not want anything Intel. I didn't choose the Ryzen 3100 either since I want something with at least 6 cores. Neither did I choose the Ryzen 2600 either. Even though it has 6 cores, I wanted the last gen CPU to get the best power efficiency. So you can see that the price performance indexes are not the canon. You still need to do your own research and choose the components that satisfy your requirements. At the end of the day, requirements analysis is the most important step in software engineering. I would have loved to get a Ryzen 4000 series processor, but they are not even announced yet. And I know that availability will be a problem when they come out. I decided not to get a custom CPU cooler since it's not necessary for a measly 65 watt CPU. When I upgrade to a higher core count Ryzen 4000 CPU, I'll get a Noctua NH D15 to go with it. On the GPU side, I didn't choose the first item in the list again since I want an Nvidia card. I want those sweet CUDA cores along with the stable drivers. So GTX 1650 Super 6GB was my choice. While waiting for my shipment, I got my hands on a GTX 1066GB for only $100, so I decided to go with it, which is almost as powerful as GTX 1650 and is half the price. I need zero graphics power for my programming tasks, and GTX 1060 is more than enough for my video and photo editing adventures. I'm planning to upgrade to a GTX 3000 series in the future if they prove to be great value cards. For the motherboard, I wanted an MSI X570 Tomahawk, but it wasn't available, so I went with an MSI B550 Gaming Carbon instead. They are roughly the same board, and on the plus side, B550 doesn't have a chipset fan. 32GB RAM and 1TB SSD are minimum if you want to run several virtual machines on your computer. Do not forget to check your motherboard manufacturer's page to make sure that exact model of your RAM is compatible with your mobile. I also recommend an M.2 NVMe SSD since they are so much smaller and faster. For the power supply, calculate the power draw of your GPU CPU combined and get something double that. This way, your power supply fan will rarely need to turn on. For the chassis, I wanted something big in case I want to install a spinning disk array in the future. Mouse and keyboard are very personal choices, so they are on you. You can also get some small disk speakers or a headset as it suits you. Now let's build some value. You can use the rest of this video as a PC build guide as I will explain all the intricacies of building a PC with modern components. It is important to start with M.2 NVMe SSD since it will be covered by other components soon. Use the M.2 slot closest to your CPU since it will generally be the fastest one. On the B550 board, it is the only PCI Express 4.0 slot for M.2. Consult your motherboard's guide if you are unsure of the M.2 circuit locations. Start by unscrewing the heatsink. Turn the heatsink around so you can peel off the protective plastic from underneath the heatsink. You will realize that there is a dent on the connection side of the SSD. This dent should align with the one on the mobile. 
Place the SSD on the socket and apply moderate amounts of force to so slide it in. Use the M.2 screw bundle with your motherboard to screw the card in. Finally, screw the heatsink back on. By the way, the heatsink on the mobile chipset might also have a plastic cover on it. Don't forget to peel it off for maximum cooling. Now on to the RAMs. It is important to continue with the RAMs in case if you have a big heatsink that will block the slots. Unlike the M.2 SSD, you want to start by populating the circuit furthest away from the CPU. We want to give the CPU as much breathing room as possible. In addition, you want to have one circuit empty between the sticks if you only have two. This ensures that the RAMs work in dual channel mode, so we will use the circuit 2 and 4. Make sure to align the dent on the RAM stick with the one on the MOBA, just like we did for the SSD. On to the CPU. Be very careful with the CPU. It has thin and very bendable gold coated pins. The CPU will only fit the circuit at the right orientation. To find it, check for the gold coated corner on the CPU. It should match the marked corner of the mobile. If you are unsure, turn the CPU so that the text Ryzen is readable from the mobile's audio panel side. Raise the CPU arm on the mobile and put the CPU in. It should slide in with no force. If it doesn't fit, do not push it in or you will bend the pins. Check the orientation and let the gravity do the work. Now lower the CPU arm back in and the processor is secured in place. Next, let's install the fan. I find Ryzen's bundled cooler adequate for a 6 core processor, so I won't go with a custom cooler. As a result, we don't need the pre installed aftermarket cooler brackets. Remove the brackets with a screwdriver. Be extra careful when removing the cooler from its packaging, since it has the thermal pad pre applied, and if you touch the bottom of the cooler or put it down, it will peel away. Before putting the cooler on the CPU, make sure that the screws do line up with the screw holes on the mobile. If you are unsure, turn the cooler so that the AMD logo on the shroud is on the I.O. panel side. After tightening the screws, connect the fan power cable to the power header labeled CPU underscore fan on the mobile. Now it is time to place the mobile inside the chassis. Put the chassis on the desk sideways and check the mobile screw sockets on the chassis. The default configuration will be for ATX mobiles. If you have a smaller motherboard, you might have to rearrange the screw sockets. You can easily unscrew the screw sockets if you need to. Just make sure that they match the holes on your mobile. If the chassis back fan is pre-installed, do not forget to remove it before putting the mobile in so it won't get in the way. At this point, my camera died, so I will continue with the photos. After the mobile, we'll need to install the power supply. In our case, we only need three cables. One 24-pin mobile power cable, one CPU, and one PCI Express cable. Both the cables and the sockets are labeled so you cannot miss them. Connect the cables to the power supply and slide the power supply into the socket in the chassis, which is generally at the bottom back. If your chassis has a bottom filter, make sure to install the power supply fan facing down. This way, it will suck cool air from outside the chassis when the fan is running. Even when the power supply fan is not running, cool air will still be sucked in from the bottom, just with the pressure difference, and will be released from the back grill. When sliding the power supply, make sure not to peel the vibration dampening pads right under the power supply. Once the PSU is in place, screw it to the chassis and inspect the cables. Route the cables from the back of the chassis onto your motherboard and connect them onto their labeled sockets on the mobile. Make sure that both the cables from the power supply and the chassis front connectors are in place. All the sockets are clearly labeled, but you might still want to check the mobile's manual just in case. The only unconnected power cable should now be the PCI Express cable, which we will use in a moment. And the grand finale. Unscrew the PCI slot 1 grid on the back of the chassis. Lower the PCI Express socket lock on the right side of the socket and place the graphics card onto the first PCI Express slot. This is the slot that is closest to the CPU and will generally be the faster one of the others. Screw the card in. Raise the PCI Express lock to the right of the socket and connect the PCI Express power cable from the previous step. All the back I.O. of the chassis should now look nice and clean. Check the cabling one last time. Finally, connect your power supply to the wall socket with the power cable and your monitor to the graphics card using an HDMI or DisplayPort cable. The electronic engineer superstition says that if you close any chassis without testing the final circuit assembly, it won't work. Make sure that the computer boots to the BIOS screen and no weird noises are coming from the PC. With my part choices, this PC will be deadly quiet. Do not forget to do a final cleanup and pack away all the leftovers from the build. I recommend keeping the original boxes if possible, in case you need to send a part for repair in the future. Operating System Installation 
I plan to use Manjaro Linux on this machine and run other OSs as QMU VMs if I need them. With a great deal of experimentation, I've settled on Manjaro as the perfect OS for programming. If you want to watch the video guide that takes you from installing the OS for the first time to developing a small web app on Manjaro Linux, you can find the link to it in the video description below. If you were wondering how the computer was working after the OS installation, I edited this video on this machine, so it sure works. It also games for sure. I will put a video clip of the computer in full action at the end of this video. Settings. The only BIOS setting that I've changed up to this point was the fan curve. I set the CPU fans not to run until CPU reaches 65 degrees Celsius. I highly doubt that running the CPU hot at all times will decrease its longevity. At least, this is what Apple has been doing with the MacBooks for years. I also set the chassis fans to start only when the mobile reaches 50 degrees Celsius. I chose a big chassis, so I want to utilize its surface area for passive cooling before the fans kick in. With this configuration, the computer makes near zero noise. I can hear my phone charger's very high pitch noise from the other room better than my computer next to me. Conclusion If you want to help out the channel and decorate your new PC, you can order some glorious Quantic Dave stickers for your PC or even a poster for your wall. If you want to watch my other guides on Raspberry Pi, Linux, programming and more, I'll put the link to the playlist in the video description below. As I use this computer, I will post updates on how it is doing. I will also post an update if I make any upgrades or do mods. I might even try to use Windows on it and see how it compares to Unix Titans for programming. If you want to catch the updates when they are out, do not forget to sub. And if you want to help your programmer friends to build their own computers, share this guide with them. Now I'm going to leave you alone with a clip of this PC in action. Good morning and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This automated train is provided for the security and convenience of the Black Mesa Research Facility personnel. The time is 8.47 a.m. Current topside temperature is 93 degrees with an estimated high of 105. The Black Mesa compound is maintained at a pleasant 68 degrees at all times.